started. Yo, what's good, everybody? Welcome back to another webinar, another Sunday breakdown. So I'm going to be breaking down gold, GJ, and silver for you guys, so you guys can kind of get an outlook on what we can expect the week uh, coming. So when it comes to gold, last week we had a huge bullish, bullish move, a close above 1830, which is a good sign for buyers. We're going to expect gold to continue to go up within the long term. Taking a look at the monthly time frame, so it is a new week and we have that strong closure. I want to see where we're at on the monthly. So we just broke above last month's highs, indicating that price is making higher highs and higher lows. If we look at last month's low and we look at last month's high and compare it to this month's, what we'll see is price actually made a higher low and now we've made a higher high. So we can expect price to actually continue to go up since we're actually forming again, higher highs and higher lows. Those are all indications of a bullish condition. So looking at the weekly time frame, price actually ended up closing uh, above the, a few weeks ago, these highs over here at 1850. So we already know that we have a support and resistance level at 1850 right on the dot. So the best setup as of right now would be to wait for price to actually pull back into 1850, where again, we'll wait for price to actually form some form of a level of support. We'll wait for that retest, and then we can look to take price up to 1870, as long as price can actually maintain itself above this 1850 level. And then we'll look for price to actually travel up into 1870. Do I think that's going to happen today? Potentially. Um, we could see the pullback into 1850 here, but again, a situation like this might happen, right? Where we might have like an indecisive candle followed up by a pullback candle, and the day after will be a uh, breakout candle. So, you know, again, all time frames have to correlate, and the way things are playing, we want to kind of be a little bit more patient with this one. So, I'm going to be looking and paying attention to this hour time frame. What I'm going to be waiting for again is a pullback, some form of a double bottom. Uh, just because I want to wait a little bit longer with this setup and then look for price to go into 1870, right? So that's what I'm going to be looking for with gold. Now, GJ, things are a little bit uh, different here because we have a, not a strong sell signal here, but we did have a sell-off here on GJ where price did reject 157.700, uh, which is something we talked about in the last webinar because this is a major level of resistance up here. So now, Looking at the weekly time frame here on GJ, immediate, immediate reaction should be that this is a major rejection off this level. So we can definitely expect a bearish move coming from GJ. Um, realistically though, since it, since it is a new week, most likely what's gonna have to happen is the week is gonna actually have to form its weekly highs. Test this area once, one more time like it did. If you pay attention to all these weekly candlesticks, right, there hasn't been one week where price didn't come back up into this area before actually selling off. So even if you guys are expecting to go short and you see a sell signal, just don't get the FOMO, wait for the retest and wait for the rejection. Most likely buyers are going to try and push price up one more time, which will then look to get in on the level itself. So we want to definitely wait for that pullback and you never want to sell after a candlestick this big either just because it's already a big move you want to wait for price to actually give us some form of a pullback we want to see at least a retest of 157 100 which is pretty much almost where the level of resistance actually kind of starts here so 157 100 to 157 500 let's call it is the range we're actually going to be looking to go short at now, when it comes to silver, silver was very interesting also because we had a big rejection of this weekly resistance over here. We had a price move all the way back to the downside, and then we had price shoot up and actually close above this weekly level of resistance. Again, all of these same concepts apply. We want to wait for that pullback. It's not worth buying something that's super expensive. It's like in today's current car market. Right. I bought my SVJ for $700,000 and retail price for it right now is a million dollars. Why would I go buy a brand new SVJ for a million dollars when I know there could be a future discount on them where it could come back down? Then that's when I'll actually look to buy again. You always want to try and buy things at a discount. And if you take that uh, ideology into trading, you're always going to want to wait for some form of a pullback before looking to buy back up. Now, where I'm going to be waiting for this pullback here on silver, ultimately, I don't want to go short in this or long in this area here. I want to see a little bit of a steeper pullback. I want to see price retest this previous level of resistance where there is selling and buying pressure, right? I want to see 
price hold above resistance. And at that point in time, I'll look to buy silver up into 23.80 thousand, right? So that is going to be the breakdown for now. Do any of you guys have any questions uh, on any of the pairs that I just broke down? Let me know. Hey, Raul. Hello? So with, with GJ, right? I was looking forward to come back into my, hold on one second, into my 156.30 level. I needed, I wanted to get your input on if that's a good level to see a, a hour rejection and then look for a 15 minute like type of entry. See an hour rejection until into the 156.300 level and then look for a 15 minute entry. What are you looking to buy? I'm looking to buy up into that, up into 156, basically 157, 100. Thing is, I wouldn't want to actually buy GJ if we were to come back down into here, even though you could, but then we would just start seeing more bearish momentum overall. Mm -hmm. If you want to look to buy GJ back up into 157 um, as a counter trend, um, mm -hmm. definitely I would take low risk with it. Uh, okay. Price could flip at you at any point in time. And I would actually probably look to buy in the area GJ is currently trading in right now. So even though this hour candlestick just opened up, notice the minor resistance here. And then notice how this resistance is still holding now as support. So if we break it down to a lower time frame, like the 15 minute time frame, we're starting to see some buying pressure off of this area. More importantly, mm. four hour time frame, what we see is price rejecting uh, this area here as well. If you see mm. this area, there's another just area of resistance here that we have over on the major, uh, bigger picture right here. Okay, for sure, for sure. That makes sense. I appreciate it. Yeah. Anybody else have any other questions? Any questions, any concerns, anything they want to ask me? Um, um yeah, Raul, um, would you, you could break down um, UJ real quick, just real fast? Um, basically what I said was based off this weekly time frame. No, no, no I said UJ. Oh, UJ. Yeah, UJ. All right. So UJ, uh, clearly this is a level of resistance that we have right here and price has been maintaining under this area for a few weeks now. You already have a strong sell signal off of this area and price currently right now is our resistance. Only thing is that it looks like it could be forming an ascending wedge to this area, which shows us that price could potentially break through this area. Um, but again, I wouldn't want to anticipate that. We look at UJ over here as well, and it's also rejected this previous level of resistance. So as long as price maintains under 115, 115 600, I would keep looking to short it back into 114, 984. As long as price maintains under that area, 30 minute time frame, it looks like it's retesting this area. So if price could give you a sell signal, I'd look to probably take price down to 114.982. Once price actually breaks above this area and you have a strong closure above it, then you can look for price to come into 116.100, roughly. Uh, yeah, so it's right now, I would look towards. All right, thanks, bro. Yeah. You did that. Anybody else got any questions? Anything they want me to break down? So hey, on, on on GJ, uh, we could be waiting for uh, the pullback into the this yellow zone that you have right there. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And ju just because it's a, a, a weekly resistance area. Yeah. So if you look at GJ on the weekly time frame, it never just immediately went down right after. It's always done some form of a retest to that level. So. I would want to wait for the retest so you can get in on the sell at the best price possible. All right, perfect. Thank you, Ro. Yeah, bro, no problem. Yo, Raul. Yo, what's good, bro? I see you got Bitcoin in your watch list. You mind breaking that bitch down? Um, only reason I have Bitcoin on my watch list is to just track where Bitcoin is at. Um, ultimately, I actually see Bitcoin continuing to drop uh, at least to 30,000 for another retest. If it breaks under 30,000, then, you know, it'll definitely go down to like 16,000 uh, around there. I mean, if you look at like Bitcoin's like previous, like big breakout when it went up to 19,000, I don't know if you guys remember that, 
right? After hitting like 20, 000, it came all the way back down into 3,000. It hit like 20,000 again, and then it went back down into 3,000. So now that Bitcoin's actually had like a huge breakout into 60,000, it only pulled back roughly like 50%. I do think it could drop more than uh, 50% potentially. Um, ultimately, it depends if 30,000 holds or not, but I wouldn't look to invest into Bitcoin unless it hits that 30,000 level where you could do like dollar cost averaging or however you want to, you know, scale into to Bitcoin. You know, you want to add, you know, money at 40,000, you want to add money at 30,000. Now, if you're day trading it from a day trading perspective, right, we want to start off on the weekly time frame. You look at the weekly time frame, what do you see? You see price break under this resistance level here at $43,263. This already is giving us a sell signal to go short. Now, where could we actually go short into? Again, the concept would be $30,000 where we have major level of support, right? Now, all you have to do is break it down into your lower time frame. So you go on the daily time frame, you see that price rejected and is now trading under $44,000. And we have resistance here at $43,000. So potentially, if you wanted to take like an aggressive, you know, uh, an aggressive position, what you do is you go short in this area with a stop loss up here let's verify the risk to reward ratio because we want a decent enough stop size stop loss and a decent enough size take profit so let's just say we want to be safe and we want to have a pretty decent size stop loss right right now we're looking to gain 3.6 times our risk if you want to take a swing trade on bitcoin then what you could potentially do is put your stops around this area here where you're still getting three times your risk and that's if you were to enter the market right now not at a pullback right? You're still getting three times your risk and overall hit the target of $30,000. But I definitely do see Bitcoin continuing uh, to drop um, just because of the way the weekly time frame is actually forming, right? Again, notice the break, notice the retest, notice that there was support here, notice the support here, notice the resistance here, and then you had a big drop. Notice price pull back up into resistance, we have a sell signal, and then we could be expecting another big drop here into 30000 Okay, okay, okay. Appreciate it. Yo, with everything going on in uh, Russia, what do you think about like Euro USD? I don't really trade it, but just to like, no. I mean, uh, you'd have to see how a war is gonna affect the currency itself. You know, um, I'm not really too updated on the news there, um, <clears throat> but I would just still focus on price action because, you know, typically, fundamentals will just kind of push price in a certain direction and you'll see that reflected on the charts anyways no yeah anybody else have any questions bro uh can you go real quick on gold gold yeah what's up so um, that's a, a question that I, that I have is um, we can, and I have this uh, marked off here on my chart, um, this 1850 zone, right? This is where we can expect uh, a pullback to continue uh, buying gold, right? Yeah. But um, what if a uh, price uh, breaks this um, 1850 zone, which is a resistance zone? We can still buy, uh, even if a price breaks under it. Like I see that we have a like a four hour uh, structure into uh, I would say 1835, 800. Honestly, so, if gold breaks under 1850, I wouldn't look to buy it unless it rejects 1830. Okay, and this uh, this is a like not a concept, but. A question that I have, if price breaks a certain um, resistance zone, but we're still in uh, a, a bullish trend, a bullish market structure, we can still look to buy, uh, but somewhere else, like in another zone. Of course. Okay. And for FIB levels, the FIBs will not be valid. If I mean, you can always trade FIB levels, right? You just go from swing low to swing high, you know, but mm -hmm. uh, the thing is like, to me, I prioritize supply and demand support and resistance over FIB levels. Right. Because FIB levels are just a, a tool, right? Yeah, they're a tool where we measure the pullback. Yeah. 
All right, man. Thanks. Problem, bro. Any other questions? <clears throat> you guys sure you don't have any other questions? Anything you guys want me to cover before the webinar ends? Hey, Raul. Hey, Raul. Oh, hey, Raul. Sorry. Uh, for gold, yeah. I'm seeing uh, 1860 as a level of resistance because it's also like a round psychological level. Yeah. So uh, wouldn't you, you know, prefer to wait for a breakout and retest before actually going to go long? Uh, than going back? Well, I don't always... Um, think because on the daily, it seems like 18 really like key level as well. 70 is a more important level because look how many attempts you know prices try breaking above 1870 versus okay. 1860 right so yes price right now is trading at 1860 resistance um but overall 1870 is a more important level in my eyes right especially if you go to the daily time frame you see the attempts on 1870 versus on 1860 which is right here Right, so I'm going to prioritize 1870 over 1860, and essentially what I'm waiting for is a pullback and a retest of 1850, which is resistance. And now that buyers have broken above resistance, I want to see if buyers can actually hold 1850 resistance, or will then look to buy up into 1870 for that retest there. Okay, makes sense. Thanks. Hey, bro. What's up, bro? Hey, um, do you mind just going through uh, the uh, S&P 500? Real quick. Okay. And uh, I saw somebody just send me a message about my Instagram. So my Instagram got temporarily disabled because somebody wanted to take it down. And somebody basically grabbed a bot, reported my account 150 times within the same day and Instagram had to take it down because um, they think I'm a fake account. So I should get it back this week. Or just I don't have any other uh, Instagram right now other than the day trading institutions Instagram. Okay. So just like, it's pretty much what we discussed uh, last week, looking at the S&P 500, we have price rejecting this bearish level here, we, bearish level, this bearish structure, price has made a lower low. We have this counter trend structure here that price is now broken into this level of support, right? On the daily time frame, right? Looking at the weekly time frame as well, it looks like an automatic bearish continuation, even though we are approaching this 50 SMA. So we wanna be cautious because if we look at you know, the S&P 500, every time, you know, it comes towards one of these SMAs, it just typically bounces off of these SMAs. So we'd want to see how price reacts when price actually gets down into this range over here, where we know the weekly, it is that 50 SMA along with that daily level uh, of support. So going to the four hour time frame, right? It looks like it's in a little bit of a range. So I would like to wait and see what price actually does um, and what price actually looks like in the New York session. But as of right now, you guys can obviously tell it's maintaining this bearish structure. So um, again, right now, it's just kind of like a waiting game to see what price actually looks like over the next few hours. Because what we could wait for is for a pullback into uh, this resistance level over here. And once price is there, we'll wait for that rejection where we can look for price to come down into that uh, daily level of support, which is like 420 pit move. Got it. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Yeah. Hey, Raul. Good, bro. Uh, so I was just wondering on gold specifically. Um, I've had levels marked off on things like 1852 and 1866, and I noticed you keep your zones uh, rounded to things like 1870 and 1850 flat. Is, uh, is there just like a specific reason you do that on your uh, liquidity levels? Um. Not necessarily, to be honest, like all my levels aren't always flat, um, but just taking at it from a buyer's and seller perspective, uh, that's what I tend to refer to them as psychological levels, because even like in the stock market, what moves the price is supply and demand. So some levels are going to have more areas of supply, some levels are going to have uh, or more specific levels are going to have areas of demand. So if we can like try and pinpoint like accuracy in terms of round numbers where there's going to be more buying and selling pressure then that's what i would uh kind of try and prioritize if that makes any sense but i don't always put it 
like right at 1830 or 1850, like, you know, this is 1813, this is 1797. Um, these are more like my more major areas. And then, you know, I kind of have my own random lines and whatever the case might be is, you know, 1870, then 1877, right? It, it, it ultimately just kind of depends on where price is trading. I appreciate it, man. Uh, also, just wanted to know if you have any thoughts on the January high on gold as well, as far as its influence on price for the next few weeks. Um, well, I mean, as of right now, price is making higher highs and it's actually broken above the January high, which this is the January high right here, which could indicate that gold is just going to continue to make higher highs because we know that in bullish market structure, Price is making higher highs and higher lows. So I would like to see gold come back into these January highs where we would look for price to hold as resistance and then look for price to go long from there to make, you know, February highs, whatever the case is, even though we've already made highs uh, for February being right here. Perfect, man. Thank you very much. Yeah, no problem. Any other questions? Yo, Raul, I got a quick question for you, bro. It's kind of a little bit off topic, but it has to do with trading as well. Yeah. But I've been thinking about buying gold, like actual gold, but I've been kind of bullish. I've been really bullish on gold, so I'm kind of scared. Like, if I don't buy it now, it's just going to get more expensive. Like, gold, buying gold to actually hold, you know, like for value on the side, besides trading and besides investing. I mean... What's your goal with it? You know, I mean, you could definitely do it. Um, the thing is, I'm not an investor in gold. Like, I'm just saying, like, buying at high price, you get me? But I feel like it's just going to keep getting higher in price. I mean, it's going to keep going up, right? At the end of the day, it's an asset. The only difference that's going to be. Um, is that you, know, you buy $4,000 worth of gold right now at its highs at 1860 versus, you know, buying it at, you know, $1,000. Yeah. $1,000 is a big difference. Um, you'll obviously not see as big of a return, but I, I, I don't see gold ever dropping again to $1,000, $1,500. Right? That, that, that's kind of like, that's kind of like what I was getting, like, too like if i just wait to try and get it cheaper it's probably not going to get any cheaper this is probably going to get more expensive over the time yeah. so it's like if i invest a little bit into it now because i want to buy i want to buy gold but like just for personal you know like for just to keep but um i feel like if i wait i'm just gonna get it more expensive later yeah i mean i mean that's how you feel you know at the end of the day it's the money you do whatever you want your investments um it's definitely going to get more expensive later um, we just, you know, you got to wait and see, because I mean, if you look at gold history over the last few years, right? So this chart started in 2007, gold was at $561. It went all the way up to almost $2,000 and then dropped, um, dropped all the way back down to a thousand dollars. So, you know, now gold is trading at. 2000 so you know I, I i'm not really um again like keen on investing into gold long term um but I mean, you can do whatever you want at the end of the day you know um it's an asset that's going to continue to go up just like the s p 500 all right i appreciate it bro yeah no problem hey raul i got one more question for you bro good bro on the psychology note, you know, with you getting ready to like have a child, how do you think like that could affect you in the long run? Um, will you probably do like a psychology video, you know, addressing that? Um, so people that's like probably will be going through that soon can like, you know, see it from your perspective. Yeah, for sure. So the way I see trading with me having a child now is at some point I'm gonna have split custody. Obviously, meaning that I'm going to be with the child for one week, and then my ex is going to be with our child for the other week, right? So the way I see it is trade as normal with the week that I'm not with my child and the week that I am with my child. Obviously, I'm going to have a crib and everything set up here in my office. 
Um, so as I'm trading, you know, I'm taking care of my child at the same time um, because I work all night. And, you know, from what I'm told, you know, a baby is going to wake up every 30 minutes. So it's definitely going to be a learning process, um, but I'll definitely document it for you guys to see how it affects my trading. And, you know, for those of you guys who, you know, uh, would be expecting, you know, anytime in the future, you know, you guys can kind of see how it could potentially affect your trading um, as well. I know one thing that's going to be affected a lot is my sleep. So I'm trying to sleep as much as I possibly can now. And remember, you need to be focused and you need to have that level of awareness and you need to get sleep to make the most logical decisions possible, right? At least six hours. So I'm going to see how I do it, but I'll definitely document it and put it on the course. So, sure, bro, that's appreciated, bro. Yeah, no problem. Yo, bro, I just um, bought like 200 accounts, bro, and I'm using one right now. Okay. But if I don't use the if I don't use the other one, like if I don't log into the other one, does it still like does my thirty days still like run down no. or not? Yeah, it's your right. first trade. Okay, cool. Thank you. Yeah. Question: Does anybody use my forex funds? No, not me. Uh -huh. Hey, hey uh, how Hey, Roll. I found it. Was it? What What happened? I'm funded with my first one. What's the max capital they offer on the regular? I, I think 200 grand. 400K? No, no, 200. Well, can you combine accounts though? I know you can combine accounts. I'm sorry, second. I know you can combine accounts. Oh, combine account, I said like 300. You can merge up to 300, uh, 300 grand. Are you sure? Per account. Yeah, yeah. You can't have 600K? No, in one account, no. But you can have 600K in two accounts. Okay. Okay. So I can have two 300Ks. Yeah, you have. You can have maximum 600 grand and you can make it for like two separate accounts. Okay, cool. I wanted to make sure because, yeah. You planning on doing a challenge with four response, bro? I already passed 600K in the challenge. I just got to do the verification now. So it's five minimum trading days, right? Damn. Yeah, I think it's five minimum. <laughs> days. This nigga said 600K. Damn. <laughs> nah, no funny shit. They have big money. Oh, I, I passed it in one trade with the silver trade. What was there like a was there like a daily hold for you or a monthly sure, hold? Right? Yeah. I only gotta make eight percent. So what I did was risk, I think like two point five percent in that trade hit. Yo, Raul, I got a question, bro. Yeah. When you swing in something, right? Like, like, say, like, 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 you hold a move, like a daily move, but like Friday come or whatever, and like, I, right, you gonna secure profits, like you take bread or whatever. Then, then Sunday and Monday come, and you see the move is not like still fully done. Like, how you rejoin that move again? Like, cause you know, like, I, right, we could get to this level down here, but like, I just took my bread cause it was Friday and I wanted to take profit, but like. You go back to it like, like how you join the move again. So let's say I bought gold down here and it went up to here and I closed because it's Friday. Yeah. Right. I would say, okay, here's another level I can look to buy gold. Right. I'm going to wait for price to pull back, retest, reject, and then I'll look to buy gold here and look to take it up to here. All right. But, but, and then you just continue to move like that. Mm hmm. All right. Yeah. So, with my forex funds, do I have to input 0.01s or no for the trading days? Yeah, I did that like uh, in the verification. I also it up for like two days. And for the rest of the days, I put like 0.01 and I have no problem with it. Because mm. I got 24 days left, meaning I think I passed already the five trading days. I think I'm just going to wait for my verification now. Yeah, I think after five days, you're good to go to that verification or something. Or you, gotta the day sure. you gotta make sure you hold it for like a certain amount of time though. It's in like the FAQs. Like I think they like a three to five minute hold time like for it to count though. Actually, I, I opened the trade and the close it in the same minute and I have no problem with that. 
Yeah, I did too, but I don't, I don't, I, I don't see an email with my verification credentials. So I don't know if I have to do 0.01s to pass or what? Actually, I, I don't know, but I have no problem doing that. You can email them. Uh, you have the email address for them. You can email the, the respondent the same like the same day. Okay, let me just just yes. just telling you, Lamba Raul, bro. They gonna fucking just approve. It. <laughs> exactly, exactly, bro. <laughs> I'm gonna start getting nervous. Yeah, I want to try and do the same thing that I did with FTMO, except with 600k. So let's see how that goes. Hey, Raul, do you already find your broker? Oh. Um, I did. Um, I think I'm gonna stay with this one. But they're definitely, they're definitely. I don't know if Carbon Capital is a white label or if these guys are the white label of Carbon Capital, but they're the same exact thing in terms of like the back office. I think their spreads might just be a little bit lower in commissions. So you're gonna stay with with that broker? Probably, yeah. Maybe it depends. It depends. I'm gonna do a withdraw and like. An hour or two, I'm gonna do like a 25, 30K withdrawal. If it goes through, I'm probably gonna have to stay with them because I'm tired of you know transferring all this money and losing transaction or losing money in Bitcoins, uh, Bitcoin fees and all that other stuff. So so Raul question. So whenever you do that, can you put in, in the in the Discord that hey, this is the one that I'm gonna stay. So man, I can wait. I can wait. Of course, of course. Thank you, man. Appreciate that. Yeah, no problem. Hey Raul, so that with that gold, uh, waiting for that pullback. Mm -hmm. Um, what hour or what time frame are we looking for on a rejection? Probably the. Um, this is silver, so. I'll would definitely be getting scared with I, going I, to like thirty. Four hour rejection, maybe something like this, and then I'll jump down to lower time frames and see what it starts looking like. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Be, 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 be. That makes sense. Yeah, I would like to see a candlestick like this form on the four hour at that level. Mm, so okay. Like the lower time frames and look for an entry. That's definitely what I needed to see. All right, but hey, this is my last question, and I'm done, Raul. Yeah, bro. For for brokers that deal with like that's able to trade through trading view, how do you feel about that? Like being able to place the trade through trading view, is that beneficial, or do you just I like want to trade a four terminal? Like these are the only brokers you could trade on trading view with. They're all regulated. Damn, even Ali. That's funny. Ella. Oh, that's crazy. That's what my card note do. I'm financing on the plane with them. That's lit. That's lit. Okay. Yeah. I did not know they did this. Interesting. Okay. Anyways, the webinar is going to end in one minute. So any like last minute questions anybody has? Bro. Bro. Uh, for breaking retest setups, we always have to wait until the uh, the price comes back to our like major zones, or we can uh, take a break and retest uh, based off uh, the hour and I don't know thirty minute time frame. Yeah, you could do that. Just know that the trades don't don't put like too much risk behind them because they're not like super high quality. But you okay. can. I I, I I also take trades like that too. Okay. Yeah. All right. Perfect, man. Thank you. Yeah, no problem. Well, all right, guys. I'm going to end the webinar here. If you guys have any questions, let me know on Discord. I'll answer the questions in the next few hours. I got to take care of some stuff. Other than that,